Aaron. Where are you? Where is A. A. Ron right now? You done messed up, A. A. Ron. I you did mess up, up AA a. Ron. <laughs> <laughs> you called it. It was perfect. <laughs> oh boy. Um <laughs> so it's been it's been an exciting week. How's you how are you guys doing? Great. I'm good. Great. I, I mean you be, I can I can't keep up with all your videos, Aaron. I can only watch so many while I'm trying to get some work done. It's true. I know. It's it's a little overwhelming. Oh my god goodness well i'm just glad that mark was able to join me for the tampa brad reveal that was so fun oh my yeah. goodness i was laughing so hard after that even <laughs> i watched it again and if you just read the comments on that video it just that's you just read that and oh so good yeah oh for everyone watching um i actually changed the commenting on this video so that you have to be a subscriber in order to comment. So that might make it a little easier to, to see everything you guys have to say and also gives people a reason to subscribe. So um, so let me see. I'm going to start out by asking Mike for his opinion as a former head of Scientology's Office of Special Affairs. How would you have dealt with it if you found out that a Scientologist who was out publicly promoting Scientology was also moonlighting as an adult film star how, how what, what view would scientology take of this dim <laughs> very dim um i think that that guy probably would have been pulled in and be being sec checked uh one minute after that was found out about it would not be let sit he would not be allowed to carry on the channel would be taken down everything would go silent he would disappear he would not be making new videos he wouldn't be making new comments he wouldn't be doing anything um it's a sort of a reflection of the state of scientology and osa these days that they don't have things like this under control and you know you you just told us that he put up a new video today about how to respond to haters there is no way this guy should be doing anything and he sort of reminds me now as i was saying to you of ryan prescott like he's a lunatic running around pretending to be a scientologist or or actually is a scientologist pretending to represent scientology and he is a a, a a joke to be nice about it. Tell and, people who Ryan Prescott is for those who don't know. Oh, Ryan Prescott is this kid who um, is somewhere on the spectrum, and I, that's not a, a that's not a, a diss. That's an actual truth. He is a son of Scientologists who uh, tried to join staff in Portland Org and was unable to, to uh, qualify and has made a sort of a living <laughs> out of doing these uh, little books that he publishes about, uh, like he did one about my book. He did uh, one about a, mine too. A billion lies, and he <laughs> and he's done uh, books about Leah Remini and the haters, and these books, if you can call them that, are are bizarre. And he does these live uh, YouTube or actually Facebook things where he has you know three or four people that are his followers who come on and he talks to them like um someone from outer space anyway this this brad you know tampa brad is now another kind of ryan prescott the, the, john alex wood used to be one of these oh, people yes. in the uk who was like and his wife they were like lunatics on the internet thinking that they were making great inroads to make Everybody understand how wonderful Scientology is, and they were the absolute laughing stock of everybody who sees them. And Osa eventually managed to get 
John A Alex Wood off the internet. Like he basically disappeared, as did, as did his kooky wife. But Ryan Prescott has, <laughs> has been still around, still doing stuff, and now Tampa bred. And, you know, I don't get it. <clears throat> Yeah, it, it. I mean, you mentioned that OSA doesn't have this under control is sort of a, a, a sign of the state that they're in. It's true. The fact that this that, that Brad was called out for doing what he was doing yesterday, and today he's in a video reading directly from L. Ron Hubbard policy about how to deal with haters. OSA's going to nuke this guy if if they weren't so busy, if OSA wasn't so busy watching our videos, they would have time to do something about Brad. <laughs> well, that may be one of the advantages of you doing like 74 videos a day or however many you do, Aaron. Like you do 74 videos, I do a blog post, Ortega does a blog post, uh, uh, then Mark does a video. Like they are consumed watching this and monitoring the media about Danny Masterson case and what's going on with David Miscavige. And, oh, we've got to talk about Mr. Mickey Witz. Okay, <laughs> good. got to talk about And also, we just will. so Mickey you know, there's Witz. somebody in the, the comments, and his name is Clearwater Chad. So not to be confused <laughs> with uh, Tampa Clearwater Brad. Brad. All right, before, Brad. We, before we jump off on Mr. Miskiewicz, there's a few comments here. Uh, Brad has a new video, How to Deal with Haters. Yeah, not only does he quote L. Ron Hubbard, but he quotes Grant Cardone. I mean, <laughs> the guy's... Uh, with, He's just a with, couple with, sandwiches with, short of a picnic. <laughs> <laughs> with friends like Brad, who needs enemies? Um, okay, do you guys think if Miscavige hadn't taken over Scientology that you guys might still be involved if control had gone to the brokers and there wasn't such horrendous physical abuse, etc.? Hmm. Uh, I've been asked this question a lot on uh, podcasts and interviews I did for the book. And honestly, it's, a, it's sort of difficult to answer hypotheticals like this, but I've generally responded saying probably I would still be there because the thing that motivated me to actually finally escape was absolutely what Miscavige did and then saying I wasn't ever coming back to the US and you know the only thing that was holding me there was my loyalty to my children and ex-wife and he basically took that away so had it not been for that I may not have escaped the Sea Org and once I had escaped the Sea Org it took me a quite a long time before I sort of peeled the onion and understood that there was a lot more wrong with Scientology than just David Miscavige. But I'm not sure if I would have made that first step. And that's, you know, I don't know. Like any broker uh, who I had known since the days of the Apollo is n was not David Miscavige. Any broker was a someone that I considered a kind, sort of gentle, as kind and gentle as you can be and still be a senior Sea Org executive. But she was a nice person. I really liked Danny. She was a personal friend of mine for a very long time. And I don't think that she would have turned the, the leadership of Scientology into, you know, Stalin too. Yeah. Now there'll be a tweet and uh, that says, I compared David Miscavige to Joseph Stalin. Like I compared <laughs> him to, you know, Kim Jong-un and Hitler and everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's something to be said for the fact that Miscavige sort of, you know, turned Scientology and the Sea Org and management into kind of the worst possible version that he could imagine. And someone who was a kinder, gentler soul would have uh, turned it into a, a kinder, gentler version. You could never completely get away from, you know, the abusive policies and practices that are contained in LRH policy. But you can um, use humanity when applying those things, or can, you can use no humanity at all. And, and I mean, and, and Miscavige even sort of, uh, uh, he, he even created a, a term for the personality that he wanted the senior executives to, what was it, cold chrome steel or cold? Yep. 
Cold Co- chrome steel. Cold chrome steel. Well, that was That's a Hubbard pers- statement, actually. Oh, it was. It yes, was? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. I always thought that he was He said Dave. that he wanted Religious Technology Center to be like cold chrome steel. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yep. Interesting. Okay, we got a comment here. What happens to Tom Cruise if and when Scientology goes down? Are there any possible repercussions for Maverick? <laughs> <laughs> Maverick. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, Go- I don't... Goose is certainly going to get revenge on him when uh, <laughs> when it goes down. That's for sure. I mean, I think if Scientology gets prosecuted, even if I, I don't think I don't think Cruz gets legal repercussions. I mean, if Scientology gets prosecuted for anything, I don't think there's any blowback on Tom Cruise. But no, no, yeah. he'll just say I had no idea any of that was going on, and that'll be the end of it. Yeah. Okay, we got one here. Please, can we get a Tampa Brad bobblehead? <laughs> no. <laughs> nope. No, no, no. And nope. we're not selling those earrings in the SP shop either for all the yeah. people that have been sending me messages. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I saw Prescott's name on Amazon and was wondering if he was a real person. He yeah. is, is a real person. Well, he, 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 has... he exists, but I'm not sure how <laughs> real he is. He did a book for mine, and it says, Blown for the good of humanity and it has a like a clown riding a motorcycle in a full red white and blue uh clown costume down the street and i was like oh i wonder how good it is like it must be good he has it up on amazon it has zero reviews it's been there for years no one's ever bought it yeah. <laughs> oh it's free you don't even have to buy it it's free and it hasn't have any reviews <laughs> That's well, maybe I should get it and do a review. Yeah, I should buy it and do it on my channel. I bet it's a book of blank pages, honestly. <laughs> or maybe kids' drawings or something. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I didn't know that he wasn't. Uh, I thought it was like an Osa sock. You know, like they just created this account to do these the silliness. I, I think that what happened was this guy sort of became a useful idiot. Yeah. Like he attracts attention. When my book came out, he'd already they'd already got onto Amazon the the summary or uh whatever it was. Like the cliff notes. The cliff notes (laughs) of my book that he hadn't ever even read. And uh, you know, got it out there and some poor people ordered that thinking they were getting the book in advance and Oh my goodness. Like so you know, it had, I guess, some usefulness to them in their minds. But yeah, he's 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 ac- actually a person. Wow, he I is. didn't, I never knew that. He is Mike. This one's up your alley. Did Scientology ever find out who or how the OT documents were leaked onto the internet? Um, well, they were originally stolen from AOSHEU by Robin Scott, who pretended to be a Sea Org member and walked into AOSHEU saying he was on mission from RTC and needed to inspect the security of the OT materials. That was originally how those materials got out. And Aaron, he went in in full Sea Org uniform. So like they literally like, yes, sir, no, sir. And they just gave him everything. I think they failed their security check. (laughs) (laughs) They're in security inspection not yeah. passed <laughs> brilliant you know it's so funny people are just so deferential in scientology to senior sea org members that mark even after you blew from the base and nobody knew you had or not everybody knew you had blown you yes. ran into some sea org members at like the grocery or you know a yeah, strip was, mall yeah it was at a it was at a hairdresser and that was the best part is because it was a girl that used to be at the international headquarters and then she was in los angeles on like a sales project And when she saw me, she was on a Saturday getting her hair done in Toluca Lake near Burbank. And she got all like weird because she thought, oh, I'm going to rat her out that she's off messing around (laughs) in the middle of the day. So I said, what are you doing? And and I had been out of the sea for like two years. <laughs> Claire had just dropped me off. Claire was Claire was pregnant with I think our second kid. <laughs> anyway, but uh, I said, "What are you doing, Katie?" And she was like, "Oh, sir, uh, I'm on the sales project, and I have to keep my hair nice, and my roots are growing out." And she started going to this whole thing, and I was like, "What's happening in Pack? What's going on right now? What's the?" <laughs> kind of what's the lay of the land and she just started telling me everything and there's actually it's funny that you say that because there's one of the 
um, Scientology spy files that I'm about to do. And it talks about that whole thing where I'd ran into her and she wrote a whole knowledge report. But she doesn't say in the knowledge report that she gave me all this intel. She just says, <laughs> Mark Headley was asking me some, obviously somebody told her like, oh, Mark Headley blew like two years ago. And she was like, oh no. Wow. <laughs> It was funny, great. But yes, awesome. you're right. She just started spilling the beans as soon as I said, what are you doing yeah. here? What are you up to? Actually, before I put this one up, I I have been told that Valeska Paris's mother is one of the people who leaked the original OT8 documents to the internet. Mm -hmm. But is that know. a different conversation than who stole them? You're talking about yeah, who but stole the OT8 them. materials didn't exist at the time. Of, oh, uh, yeah, that's different. Yeah. Robin Scott that's different. Stuff. That okay. was OT three through five. Got it. Okay, good. So we maybe we should sell some earrings in the SP shop. What are they going to be? Uh, Zenu uh, earrings? I don't know. Zenu, Zenu earrings well, guaranteed to get lost in the okay, couch cushions. I'll take it into consideration, but I'm not going through Ash any more of Ashley's videos. I've already been through like 100 trying to see what those <laughs> earrings look like. I'm not going yeah. through any more. <laughs> um you know people keep asking if we can have t-shirts in the store and 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 there's so it's so hard there's so much work no. involved in just we're doing it we oh, already have it all set want to oh. oh no we've 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 been working on this i know i've been saying that until we do but okay. yes we are doing t-shirts mugs I guess earrings now. We'll see. Um, we're what, gonna are have all kinds gonna of what are the t-shirts going to say? What are the t-shirts going to say? Don't be culty. They're going to okay. say Zenu is my homeboy. Oh, um, okay. S P A F. Um, okay. You know, certified Suppressive S P. Is my superpower? What's okay. that? Suppressive person is my superpower. Oh, that's a good one. That's Claire's. Is that what she did? She told me that that well, that's good. That's what she said. <laughs> oh, I don't do know. I haven't seen all of them. There's a, there's there's going to be tons. Okay, good. All right, here's the next one. Uh, given how numbers are dying, do you, any of you think DM would ever ask members to have children to repopulate Scientology? Could the SO be tasked with that? No. 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 No, that's, nope. uh, that place is drier than a sand trap. No one's getting uh, kids coming out of there. Yeah. The thing about Scientologists having a lot of kids is that doing Scientology is very expensive. So having 10 kids doesn't get you anywhere except not able to pay for their bridge. Christianity is different. You have 10 kids, you got 10 believers. So, but it just doesn't work that way in Scientology. It's one of the weird things. Like if Scientology was cheaper, Scientologists would have more kids. You'd have more people to give Scientology money. Like Scientology is just so poorly managed. Just you could have a hundred different examples. And this is one of them. This is one of them. Well, they're Our, they're operating off of uh, stolen uh, military technology perverted by a science fiction writer. So, exactly. Is Heber Jensch still alive? I believe so, but yeah, in a assisted living facility. Yeah, was the last I had heard. Hmm. Yeah, it's sad to think of the life he could be living if he was had a way to get out of there. You know, let me ask you this, Mike. Knowing his background, his family, whatever, uh, aside from the fact that the Aftermath Foundation would help him in a heartbeat, does he actually is he one of these people who actually does have the resources to leave? Would have somewhere to go if oh, he wanted to? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I mean, hmm. even Tammy Clark, his niece, who we did the Aftermath program with and then had her on the podcast she she is the one that went flew from from um salt lake no not salt lake wherever it is that she she lives in in utah to la and then went down to riverside to try and get a wellness check done on heba because mm. she was concerned for him and he, as you may know, has like 34 brothers and sisters because his dad was a polygamist and he has like six sister wife, mother, so whatever they call them. I don't know what they are. So he's got a lot of family. A okay. lot. <laughs> like, wow. He has more than the regular guy family. Wow. All right. Let's... um. We have questions to get through, so let's not spend too much time on this one. But, Mike, can you tell me what's going on with Marty Rathman? Uh, is he still blown from Scientology, or is he back in the Scientology fold? Um, Thank you for the question, William. He, <laughs> we get he, asked this question about 17 times a day. 
he is still uh he is not back in scientology he is not a scientologist he would never be allowed to be a scientologist he is another tool that is being used by david miscavige and the office of special affairs as some part of some deal that he made with them to attempt to discredit people whom he formerly uh, supported, like us three and many other people. And um, I don't know the circumstances as to how that came about. I wrote about it in my book and gave as much detail and uh, supposition and understanding of it as I am able to give. And there isn't really much else to say about it. I mean, he could have just gone off and disappeared into the never-never and n not continued his fight against Scientology. Um, some others have done that and, you know, more power to them. He decided that he was going to agree to shit on people that formerly had been you know, his friends and supporters. And so, you know, for that, he, he doesn't deserve any credit, but I, I honestly, I feel sorry for him. I feel sad that he has ended up where he has ended up because it's, he doesn't have any friends. <laughs> Scientology hates him. <laughs> the vast majority of people who used to respect and admire him for his stand against Scientology also now hate him. So he lives in a world of nobody trusts him, nobody likes him, and that's a pretty shitty place to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, this is interesting. Bought an e-meter off eBay. One of the cans has the name Jalot taped inside. Could that be TC sister Leanne's husband, Tom? Jalot. First, I thought Leanne was married to, oh no, Cass. Which one's married to Greg Capizorio? That's the small one. The, yeah, the darker hair. Cass. Little, one, one. Cass. Okay. Yeah. What Tom about Jalot. Wendy? I don't know, I don't know Wendy? who Tom Jalot is. I don't know who Tom Jalot is either. I know I a know Wendy Derek Jalot. Derek Devet that that. Uh, that was Leanne's Leanne used first to be husband. Married to, but I don't know Tom Jalot. Never heard of that name before. There's a yeah. Wendy Jalot who used to be a professional director and editor for Gold Air that we used to hire. Maybe it was hers. Yep. So for what it's worth, though, it's not a common name in Scientology. And if who if that name is on those cans, then that that's that's what that means. <laughs> you could just search on um, the Internet. You just say Jalot Scientology, Scientology. Service Completions. And it's going to tell you whichever one it is. Yeah. All right, next question. When the writing is on the wall for Scientology, will David Miscavige try to run away with the loot to a non-extradition country, or will he hang on to the very end, screaming from the battlements? <laughs> Depends what the circumstances are. When, I mean, the writing on the wall for Scientology, if that writing on the wall is, here is an in indictment for criminal behavior, yeah, he'll take off. He's not gonna. He, he's not going to stick around to go to prison. Believe me. I was. Yeah. I was talking about that yesterday when we did a live mic. But yeah. do you remember whenever we were shooting videos like on Criminon or something like that? Do you remember how many times Dave brought up, um, like what would you what would you think this person would do if he went to prison? Like you know he's gonna he would he he talked about that like an unusually like frequent amount. Well, when the IRS CID was investigating him and he was a target of the investigation, he was completely paranoid about going to prison. Yeah. Completely and utterly. He mm. talked about it all the time, about what was going <laughs> to happen to him, how yeah. he was going to, like, he, Bubba was going to take him down. It was going to mm -hmm. be, and this was all uh, in the vein of it's really important that this get dealt with because I won't survive that. That's right. Wow. He, I mean, Aaron, I'm not joking. I, if he, if he talked about this prison thing less than a hundred times, I'm, I'd be surprised. Like I'm underestimating when 
ever we showed a prison on a video he would pipe up and be like oh wow. you know you none of you guys could last 10 10 minutes in prison and he was just like oh my god wow <laughs> well and for what it's worth my guess would be he wouldn't make away with the loot he'd make away with some loot it's not like scientology's accounts are gonna uh you know one morning have i'll be at zero and no one's gonna know what happened no like, he's got he his might own have squirreled little... away 10 million yeah. bucks or something i mean he right it's paid Per the, per well, I don't know where this information came from, but there's a report that he is paid a few hundred thousand dollars a year out That's of right. RTC. So he That's doesn't have any expenses personally. So that money's just stacking up. Right, and and if he escapes somewhere, it will be to a location that is part and parcel of him still being the COB. Mm. Like it's not going to be. He's abandoning Scientology to, it'll be just like Hubbard. Like when Hubbard was in hiding, you know, Miscavige was providing the briefcases full of cash to Pat Broker to relay to Hubbard. It wasn't like Hubbard was off doing his own thing. He was still part of the, of the fabric of the organizational structure, even though it was all sort of weird at that point with author services, et cetera, et cetera. But, Miscavige doesn't need personal money. I make this point over and over and over. He can snap his fingers and get anything he wants, anytime he wants it. And that is a much better position to be in than have a bunch of money yourself. Because yep. when you got a bunch of money yourself, you are, like as an individual, the IRS is able to, you are required to report and they are able to audit you. They don't get reports from Scientology. Religious organizations don't have to report shit to the IRS. And there is a Church Audits Procedures Act that effectively prevents the IRS from auditing churches. So it's it would be nuts for him to take a lot of personal money. He doesn't need it. Yep. Makes perfect sense. All right, let's see. Next one here. Uh, my friend's brother is OT7, and his last course was Superpower. Can you please explain this course? 10-second version. It's just a bunch of auditing that, honestly, it, it's I, I don't even know how to describe this. What's like it's, the 15-second pitch? Uh, I, I will tell you. Okay. It was auditing procedures designed by L. Ron Hubbard to deal with staff who couldn't do their jobs. And it is ethics handlings it is increasing awareness it is raising responsibility level it is all these things that he said this is what crappy staff members need and then eventually that was sold to the public like it's the that. same it's all these things were developed for golden air Productions. somehow l ron <laughs> hubbard was the master of the universe but he could not get the golden air productions crew <laughs> to mix a tape or produce a song or shoot a movie. So almost all of Lower Bridge is like stuff that he invented for Gold well, Air Productions. Well, I, you, there was Key to Life. Yep. There was Life Orientation Course. There false was Purpose false Rundown. False Purpose Rundown. <laughs> There the was the Purif. <laughs> there was the running program. There super was power. super power. <laughs> All like... because you guys couldn't make a damn film up there. Oh, yeah. and this is the best part. The people, this is the most amazing thing. The people that he couldn't get to get their jobs done, they're still there to this day. <laughs> and Dave's been yelling at him ever since Ella Rage left. <laughs> Gary Weesey, Rick Cruzen, Ray Midoff. <laughs> Uh, uh, Norman Stark, all these people that were like Peter just Schliss. Peter, Sch all these people that couldn't get anything done, they're still there, not getting anything, done. not getting anything. And, and do you know what, Aaron? What what the really sad part about that is? That's absolutely true, Mark. But if any one of them left, they would be able to be a star, hmm. like. They could oh, go yeah. out and get a job literally anywhere and be an absolute rock star. Mm. Like the people who painted the fucking sets at Gold, who were always in trouble, who were always useless, who couldn't paint, you know, they, they were hopeless, blah, blah, blah. They are like sought after individuals in that, in, in the movie industry because they're so good 
and they mm. work so hard yeah. and they're so efficient. It's like, and look at, look at Mark. Like, well, he I know, took, but I, but I was going to tell you the story of this other guy. One of my juniors, when I was on the film team, one of my juniors designed a, a lighting system and he was basically offloaded from the Sea Org. Like Dave kicked him out of the Sea Org for this lighting system that he designed because it used German lights and German, Germany was an SP country. And this guy <laughs> with nothing, he literally was kicked out of the Sea Org with, with not a pot to piss in. He worked his way up the industry, ba uh, back up the in, the in the film industry. And his lighting system was used on like all the James Bond movies, the Harry Potter, the lighting system that he designed at gold. He literally made that into a multi-million dollar business. And it's used by all these big film productions. And this is the best part ever. <laughs> he was thanked personally by Tom Cruise for his amazing lighting system and how awesome it was when he did, um, did a Tom Cruise movie. Incredible. Tom Cruise has no clue who this guy is that David Miscavige <laughs> thinks he's the biggest pile of turd. And Tom wow. Cruise was like, thank you, dude. Your system is amazing. I can't yeah. believe can't believe you, you, you're here working on a project. Yeah. I mean, that's what makes it so heartbreaking is these guys are treated like pieces of crap, like they're failures, like they'll never be nothing. If they if they just left, they'd be, uh, they'd be rock stars. making an incredible living in, in whatever field yeah. they chose to work in. They'd be amazing yep. rock stars. Yeah. Peter Schliss is actually a genius musician, like mm. a genius. He actually wrote a big hit before he got into the Sea Org too, on the uh, on the on wings, wings of, of love. love. This guy wrote that song from, you know, the 80s, but still, it's a good song. Yeah. All right, cool. Here's the next one. This is interesting. Given things like Haggis' uh, Haggis's trial and crashes, do any of you have like an if something crazy happens, open this lockbox for stuff I never shared? Nope. Mm -hmm. No. Nope. Okay, good. Next question. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any news on when's Mike, when Mike's audiobook will be available in the United Kingdom? Yes, I actually got an email this morning, but I, I am sort of loath to share it until I have absolute confirmation. But it looks like they plan to release it on the 31st of January, finally. Mm. So fingers crossed. I wow. mean, this has, been, this has been the most ridiculous bureaucratic nightmare that I have dealt with since I left the Sea Org. It is like getting a damn... CSW for an event budget approved. It's like crazy. It's hmm. just being lunatic. So hopefully it's going to happen. Very cool. What happened to the old fleet of boats? We'll read Mike's book after finishing Mark. Oh, so like the Athena, the... Um, the they got sold. The Sc Apollo got scrapped. Okay. Like it got sold to a... a you know, a scrapyard in Brownsville, Texas, and was, went there and was like pulled to pieces. But Frank McCall managed to get a bunch of bits off it before that happened. Mm. And they are inside the superpower building mm. in the recreation of the L. Ron Hubbard research room, which was mm -hmm. the name of his office on the Apollo, the research room. Nice. So yeah, so Scientology doesn't have these ships like stored in mothballs. They're all sold and scrapped and whatever. They, I no. think they have the Diana as well. Somewhere. Yeah, the the Diana mm. is with the free winds. They yes. did track that down, bought it, restored it. If CST and this current kick of buying all the old L. Run Hubbard offices and houses and shit that all over the world had existed, probably those things would have been preserved. Mm. But that was interesting. They didn't days. think about it until they were like trying to just brainstorm up ideas on how we can spend money. <laughs> right. And, and actually, the only person that thought about it was Frank McCall. Mm, Frank yeah. McCall, who had been one of the original, I think he was the original first mate on the Diana or the Athena or something. I can't remember. Um, who had also been declared by L. Ron Hubbard to be a something squirrel, like a inveterate or you know like a never to change squirrel <laughs> and was brought for, as a he had left the sea org he was back in the uk as a public person and hubbard had him brought back to the apollo as a public person 
the only one that I ever knew, and put on the RPF so that he wouldn't cause any trouble in the UK. <laughs> so he has a, a very strange career. Uh, he passed away, but he was a he was a real character and he built a model of the Apollo that's like 15 feet long that is absolutely amazing and to everything is to scale every single piece himself like made each little bit and stuck it on there it was like incredible but that's all it, he ever did build all right models. if david miscavige is so unimaginative that he cannot invent ot9 and 10 is david miscavige so unimaginative that he cannot invent ot9 and 10 um so it would be hard to come up with OT9 and 10. No, it wouldn't. I think it would be really easy. Really? I, I would just, absolutely. I would just go to creation of human ability and take a bunch of those wacky processes that Hubbard came up with about going around Mars and all that sort of shit and say, this is what it is. The problem that he has is it is better to not have OT9 and 10 than to have it. It's the carrot, the, the never-ending carrot. It as a carrot is far more valuable than actually having anything. Because once you got it, and then people get on it, and it's bullshit, then you're going to lose even more. The hope that something is coming is a valuable, a sure. valuable thing to have. And, and Miscavige has been milking that since 1986. So, yep. yeah. And that's part of what I mean when I say it would be hard. Be hard. Uh, be, be, it's been built up for so long that people have been waiting for 30 years. It would be hard to come up with something and then justify why that was so incredible that you had to wait 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, but, coming... but, but but he can justify anything and explain anything to those people. It's Literally. True, yeah. the, reason I, it know... can't, the reason it can't be released now is because there's too many SPs on the internet. So once that's we get exactly all those right. SPs off the internet, not And YouTube. we don't have all the orgs <laughs> ideal, and we haven't made enough money, and we don't have an L. Ron Hubbard Hall, and we need more. We need a new ship, and we have to raise funds for a new ship in order to be able to release OT9 and 10, and everybody has to do the briefing course, but we need to get the briefing course done, but I'm too busy to do the briefing course, so blah, 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 blah. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a never-ending revolving door of bullshit there you go all right mark this one's for you are you ready sure finally oh my goodness <laughs> don't say it out loud i don't want to get i'm not things. gonna say anything i can't read it i don't have my glasses on oh is that why you're saying jesus because you can't read it <laughs> mike you want to tell him what it says no just kidding don't do that <laughs> What's wrong with you? Okay, here we go. Say my name. Cleveland Steamer say says, my "Say name. my name." And if you oh don't my... know what my name means, look it up. Your lights you... turned off, Aaron. Right. It's a sign. I'm I'll read it. Replace that it light. Says, oh, it says, um, "Oh, I can't read that." <laughs> Aaron, you're gonna get demonetized. Oh my you, goodness. Uh... Um, I. Cleveland steamer. I've heard of a Stanley steamer. There's a bit about that Andrew does Clay does, but I've never. Maybe he does say Cleveland steamer. I don't yeah, know. I don't think the YouTube algorithm knows what that means, so we're good. Okay. okay, is it true that one of the superpowers is the ability to get the USB cord in the right way every time, oh first time? <laughs> I'd go back to Scientology for that. Oh, able to open any jar of pickles. <laughs> <laughs> are you now agnostics how would you describe it uh to wow, me agnostic is just a a cheap way of calling yourself an atheist although i know they're really different yeah i mean i i, I would have to say so i mean i, I just I, I would i would describe myself as either agnostic or atheist which whichever one you want to use <laughs> atheist means there is no god agnostic means i don't know it seems more intellectually honest to say that you don't know. It's just that it's hard to imagine someone coming up. Anyway, I don't want to shit on religious people because that's, uh, you know, I, I don't look down on religious people. But it, it's not like somebody would recreate those stories um, in present time, it, I, in my opinion. Anyway, what do you guys think about this? Um, I, I describe my views at the end of my book. So 
If you want to <laughs> know what go. they are, read the book. Wow, that's a good one. I explain those in the middle of my book. <laughs> just so you know, if you want to get the book, you can only have to read halfway through my book to get that answer. <laughs> yeah. So Mike's book Way is called A Billion <laughs> Years. Mark's book is called Blown for Good. Whatever happened to Mary DeMoss? I don't know. She lost her mind. She thinks she's married to Jesus and no one ever heard no. from her again. No, just, that's not I'm what just, happened. I've spoken to her. I don't even know who she is. She I, All yeah. I know... I'll, I'll she's know she a is. woman that during a protest in Clearwater, she was very, very mean to Mark um, Bunker. She okay. treated him very poorly. Um, even by Scientology standards, she was pretty evil. And, um, and she basically... Uh, harassed Mark whenever he came to film at Clearwater. And then um, I think she had her own bad experience in Scientology and then she ended up leaving and then she wants nothing to do with Scientology. But that video of hers was on the internet and she was having a lot of problems in her personal life because of that video. I mean, rightly so, she was, that was a bad thing to do. But she actually ended up writing to me and I, I think I may have even um, convinced or tried to convince Mark to take it down because she was having so much trouble. And um, I can't remember what happened and I've lost touch with her. Mm. So there's the answer. She left Scientology is the uh, TLDR answer. Right. Got it. Okay. Well guys, I was scrolling through the super chats because there's just such an incredible amount of them. We'll never be able to finish in the next four minutes, but so let's just do lightning round here. If people in this year are going to make 40 cents an hour, where does all the money go that Scientology has? It goes to Sea Org reserves and it sits there and just accumulates interest and nothing is done with it except maybe buying some buildings every now and then. Am I right? This, the policy is that um, account can no, never go down. We don't want to get the policy. We no, no, just can go, never go down. It always has to go up so they don't spend it. I got it. I got it. Mike, will you and Leah think about videotaping your podcasts? Uh, it, yeah, uh, it, so that you got video to go with the audio ever? Yep. If you, okay, good. Um, and do you think Tom Cruise really knows the extent of all the abuse and the terrible things that are happening? Yes, yep. Dave has told him that he has told us that he told him. Good. Um, is this what you guys have always said, that the TV series was just the beginning, then came the podcast, books, blogs, and now multiple YouTube a day? Great job. The downfall. Oh, this is what you guys have always said. Yeah. I mean, the YouTube things just sort of popped up. It wasn't necessarily part of the grand plan, but it, it's, it's, it's an even more effective medium, perhaps, than something that's on a streaming or a network. Who knows? Who knows? We're a little bit more free to tell the stories than uh, we are if we're on another kind of platform. Yeah. Are all those fancy cars, motorcycles, et cetera, in David's name or are they property of the church? Um, most uh, half and half. OK. Um, I romance explosion with Shelly Miscavige. Nice. All right. Romance. I explosion. think that's a bot that that's the same person who made that last comment. Bots don't donate 20 bucks for a super chat. Oh, maybe. <laughs> Since I donate to the Aftermath Foundation and Chris Shelton, do I count as an undeclared SP? Yeah, absolutely. Honorary. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how did LRH make up all the tech? I mean, come on. Is <laughs> Okay, the answer, drugs and alcohol. Well, he was a science fiction writer. <laughs> he just never stopped writing fiction. <laughs> um, yeah, some pinks, blues, grays, and whatever the heck. <laughs> pinks, blues. Uh, okay okay we're almost done wouldn't it be awesome to have an aftermath commercial following a scientology commercial during the super bowl <laughs> would be so funny it would be funny don't forget to set your amazon smile charity to the aftermath foundation that's a great thing to promote if you use yep. amazon smile um uh, the aftermath foundation is one of the charities that you can select for your um for your amazon smile donations Love and support for y'all in your fight against the itty bitty uh, teeny tiny munchkin leader riding around on his Apple box. Thank you very, very much. Mr. Mickey Wits. Um, I cannot do the next one because it's got bad words in it. I'm jumping out. I'll see you okay, guys. Okay, get your thing going one. and we'll jump right over there. Good oak. Okay. Um, Alexander asks if Mike had any experiences with Janet Laveau or Mark Pynchon. Um, yes. Well, Janet okay. Laveau was the head of the Office of Special Affairs for Canada for a long time. Oh, so there you go. I had a lot of experiences with her. Okay, good. And this will be the last one. 
Um, big one. Thank you, Rick Elkins. Considering the current path Scientology is taking, do you think Miscavige really thinks there is a problem? Does he even care? And does he believe it can recover if there is a problem? This is a good one. Do you think Miscavige thinks there's a problem on the trajectory Scientology is currently on? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, he sees the the stats. I mean, yeah. he tries to pretend to everybody that it's all going great, but he sees how many new people. I mean, he has detailed uh, weekly if not daily statistics of how much money is being taken in, how many books are being sold, how many people are coming in newly, how many people are signing up for courses, how many people are completing courses. And while you can paper over the world of Scientology by getting whales to donate $100 million to the IAS, the reality is that the organizations are shriveling, 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 and that spells the end because you can't have Scientology without the Scientology part of it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys, as soon as I end this broadcast, you're all going to be redirected to part two of this conversation that we're going to have over on Mark's channel. We'll see you over there.